Here we go. You're listening to Email Friday on Law and Gospel on this March the 31st, the last day of March in the year of our Lord, 2023. I'm Pastor Tom Baker, and the first email we're going to be taking a look at is a poll showing American values have changed drastically because of the pandemic. According to a new poll, it looks like there was a seismic change in America's values during the past few years. And you probably have been noticing that just by reading the newspaper and seeing a lot of people no longer going to church, etc. In August 2019, just months before the COVID pandemic, 89% of Americans thought hard work was very important. 62% saw community involvement as important. Six out of 10 Americans thought patriotism was very important. Almost half of Americans, 48%, saw religion as very important, and 43% saw having children as very important. However, a new Wall Street Journal poll conducted at the University of Chicago finds that support for all these values, it really has plummeted. Now, two-thirds of Americans see hard work as being very important. That's down from 89%. Only 38% see patriotism as very important. And when it comes to religion and having children, it's now 39% who see religion important in contrast to the 48%. And in contrast to 43% who saw children as being very important, only 30% thinks that that matters anymore. And forget about community involvement. Only just over a quarter of Americans now think that's important. What has changed? Well, the poll was first conducted in 1998, and not surprisingly, wide swings occurred between 1998 and 2019. In those 21 years, America experienced a recession, increasing social liberalism, the horrors of 9-11, the advent of smartphones, among other things. Yet in three and a half years, the latest poll indicates America seemed to change more drastically than it did in the prior 21 years. Of course, what happened in 2020, 2021, and 2022 was immense. Government mandated shutdowns of schools and private businesses and forced mask wearing. This closed churches, even for Christianity's holiest day, Easter. There were warnings about all gatherings uh, until racism was considered a greater threat than COVID-19. Crime escalated. Government-funded checks going to people who stopped working during the pandemic increased. Black Lives Matter inspired riots, and parents mad at school boards were compared to terrorists by the Justice Department. Was the pandemic a blip? This poll suggests that no. The pandemic and our response to it wasn't just a one-time matter, but a trajectory-altering event for our country. 
and not in a good way. You know, hard work has long undergirded the American dream. Community involvement, too, has been one of the most basic, unique, and fruitful characteristics. In his classic Democracy in America, 19th century French philosopher and historian Alexis de Tocqueville wrote, Americans of all ages, all conditions, all minds constantly unite. Not only do they have commercial and industrial associations in which all take part, but they all have a thousand other kinds, such as religious, moral, and very particular, events, and very small. They founded seminaries, they built inns, they raised churches, they distributed books, and they sent missionaries overseas. Well, today, that's not happening as much. It's a brave new America, and that's a chilling reality we should not forget. Now, we're a member, of course, of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, and we also uh, support Concordia Mission Society, which has sent many missionaries overseas. But the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod and a few other Lutheran denominations are very, very good in keeping biblical thought. If you were to choose what church to go to, then you really need to look at the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod because how do you know what church to choose? Which is the right one? Well, remember, church primarily means everyone who believes in Christ. It can refer to a denomination, it can refer to a local congregation, or it can refer to a house of worship, like I'm going to church on Sunday. But religion is a system of belief. People often refer to major world religions such as Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, or Islam. But in reality, as we've been looking at the Book of Proverbs on Wednesdays, written by Solomon under inspiration of the Holy Spirit, there are only two religions in the world. One teaches that we save ourselves by good works. The other, which is the only true religion, Christianity, teaches that God saves us by an act of mercy in Christ, who suffered, died, and rose again for sins. You know, branch indicates a major division of the Christian religion that's often distinguished by a particular theology or a way of interpreting the Bible. And you can go through each religion outside of Christianity and find things that are contrary to the scripture. Roman Catholicism teaches that one can pray to the saints. The Reformed deny the real presence of Christ in the Lord's Supper. Arminianisms say that man can make a decision for Christ. Denomination refers to a subdivision of the Christian religion, often organized according to church government. For example, Episcopalians are organized under bishops. Presbyterians have a system of presbyters or elders, and so forth. What we're looking for in a local congregation is a church that interprets the Bible correctly. Well, some will say, don't all congregations claim to have the truth? That, that's true. But evaluating a congregation is not as hard as you, must, you might think. Here's what to look for when you move into a new area and are deciding what church should I go to. 
Choose the church that teaches you to trust in Jesus Christ alone for salvation. You can't save yourself any more than you can lift yourself by your own bootstraps. The Bible says in Titus 3, he saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior. That's Titus 3, verses 5 and 6. That's called the gospel. That's the good news and is the central teaching of the entire Bible. When you visit a church, listen carefully and ask yourself if the gospel is central to the sermon. Is it central to the hymns? Is it central to the order of worship? Does this particular congregation believe the whole Bible is God's revelation to man? Listen to 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. Does this particular church believe in the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Make disciples of all nations, according to Matthew 28, 19, by baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Another question, does this church believe that Jesus Christ is the only Son of God and the only Savior of the world? 1 John 4, verse 14. The Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Does this particular congregation believe that Christ died for the sins of the whole world? According to 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 1 John 2, 2, where it says he died for the sins of the whole world. Does this congregation believe Everyone is saved by the grace of God through faith. That means trust in the atonement of Christ. Ephesians 2.8. By grace, you have been saved through faith. Also, does this church believe that baptism washes away all sins? Acts 22.16. Rise and be baptized and wash away your sins, referring not only to adults, but even to infants. Does this congregation believe the words Jesus spoke when he instituted the Lord's Supper? Matthew 26, verses 26 to 28. Take, eat, this is my body. Drink of it, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. In other words, there are a few things not to be watching for. Don't select a church because it's the nearest one or has the most attractive building. In fact, I tell my members who may be leaving one of the four churches I'm helping out with, and they're going to another state for a job or whatever, first of all, find a church that you will want to attend, and then buy your house afterwards so the church and the house are close to each other. Don't suppose that every congregation is alike that all are equally good and lead to the same place. And don't hesitate to join a believing church, especially a Lutheran one, even if some family members object. The Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, endeavors to preserve and pass on the entire truth of God as found in the Bible. 
And how do you know that truth? Well, I would really encourage you to listen to the programs on radio station KFUO. And you don't even have to be near St. Louis where the station is because I've got people who listen on the internet in Asia, in Europe, in Africa, in South America. You just go to kfuo.org and there you'll see a whole number of programs that are live, including this one, Law and Gospel. And you can choose a date for some time now and click on that and you will hear the message of Christianity. The Lutheran Church does not destroy the truth of God by believing only what seems reasonable. The Lutheran Church is centered in the gospel. And that sounds ridiculous to the world. And yet, when it is told to the world, the Holy Spirit can move in a person's heart and create faith. It's also important when you visit churches to take time to talk to the pastor, to discuss your interests, your questions, your problems, or any needs that you're bringing with you. Numbers 10, 29 says this, come with us and we will do good. So it is really important to be going to a congregation that preaches the word of God properly. Because as we said in the first email, the pandemic has really changed American values during this time for a bunch of reasons. And that's why there is such a need for the church to do its job. The other email that we want to touch on was how do Christians handle unwelcomed events such as what has happened during the last few years? And the email starts off with a text from Proverbs 24, verse 10. If you do nothing in a difficult time, your strength is limited. Now, that, that's really obvious in many situations. For example, if you are a parent and you do nothing to discipline your children because being born with original sin they need to trust in Jesus Christ, follow his will. And that comes about by parents sharing the good news, taking them to church, Sunday school, vacation Bible school, teaching them confirmation, also not only at church, but also at home. And so a Christian family really makes a difference as they do something because the children will be going through difficult times. You know, many people talk a good game. It's easy to evaluate someone else's life and offer commentary on what measures they should or shouldn't be taking, and yet neglect to take action or make decisions on your own. For example, you can watch a movie or a dramatic television episode and say, if that were me, I would have done this. Yet when life happens to us, we aren't as courageous. Child of God, life indeed happens to us all. If we could ask Brother Job, he would tell us, man born of a woman is short of days and full of trouble. We cannot escape the difficulty that comes with daily living here on earth because in a sense, this is a kingdom of Satan. Though we are Christians, uh, believers in Christ, this does not inoculate us from experience the highs and lows of life, Christian or not. Being a parent is hard, 
Believe it or not, building a business is taxing. Whether you're a follower of Christ or not, you will have your share of heartaches. You will be mistreated. You will feel disappointed. Remember the Beatitudes. Blessed are those who are persecuted for my name's sake. You cannot help what may happen to you, but you can control how you respond to unwelcome events. And that's the critical thing that we're talking about. For starters, you have to do more than talk. Saying what we would do means nothing if we actually don't do something when the moment comes. Don't allow difficulty to encourage inactivity because if you do nothing, nothing changes. Remember the woman with the issue of blood in the Bible? Did she let her condition influence her position? No, she realized that Jesus was indeed someone she had been waiting for. And she recognized an opportunity within her grueling medical condition and entered into his presence, touched his garment, and was healed. Where would the man lame from his mother's womb be if his infirmity arrested his activity? You may ask, what did he do? Well, he remained at the pool of Bethesda until Jesus arrived. I would respond, that may be true, but he got to the pool some way. Whether carried or crawled, he found a way to mobilize himself while he was still immobile. Don't you see? Your difficulty doesn't have to dictate what you do. In some way, in every trial, there is an opportunity if you only see it and then seize it. How many opportunities are forfeited because we fail to act when harsh conditions attach to us? How often have we proven our strength to be no greater than the problem we're facing? The power to move or act while things are calm and controlled, well, that's one strength. However, the ability to operate during the chaos, remain reserved, when things are out of your control or keep calm in strenuous times is another degree of, of strength. Sadly, we can't choose what life will throw at us, but we can decide how to face horrible situations. Obviously, God wants us believers to be strong and firm. The Apostle Paul admonishes us to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. It is in times of adversity that we can display God-given strength. Now, how do we do that? We share the message of Holy Scripture. Remember when Jesus on the road to Emmaus faced two disciples who were totally confused about the death of Jesus, and then hearing about his resurrection, he went to the Old Testament passages and explained from the Old Testament the reason why he had been sent to earth in the book of Daniel by the Ancient of Days, God the Father, to redeem the earth by his sacrifice on the cross. That is the purpose of why he became incarnated. That's why it's really unique that you have a radio station like AM850 KFUO, or you can find it on the internet at kfuo.org, because many of the programs tell something to you that you may be unaware of. And as you hear those programs, you are comforted even in the worst times. 
Remember the Apostle Paul? He witnessed this firsthand in his own life. He was faced with a thorn in his flesh. We, we don't know if it was a problem in being able to speak or if he had a problem in his sight. Uh, scholars haven't really decided what the thorn in the flesh was. But he prayed to the Lord to take it away and remove it from his life because he felt it interfered with his preaching. He thought it was a hindrance and at best a nuisance. However, the Lord revealed that this thorn in the flesh was a wonderful predicament that would display the Lord's strength in his life. From this experience, he undoubtedly penned these words, praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. He comforts us in all our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any kind of affliction through the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Therefore, share that wonderful message. Learn more about it by listening to KFUO and join us on Monday when we use the distinctions between law and gospel to take a look at the verses assigned for Easter. Until then, God bless you. Listen to Law and Gospel each weekday morning at 930 on KFUO. For a tax-deductible gift to Law and Gospel, please make your check out to Law and Gospel and mail to Law and Gospel P.O. Box 28910, St. Louis, Missouri 63132 or call toll-free 1-877-267-1962. Views and opinions expressed on Worldwide KFUO may not represent the official position of the management or ownership of KFUO, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. If you'd like to comment on programs or topics heard on Worldwide KFUO, write us at KFUO, 1333 South Kirkwood Road, St. Louis, Missouri, 63122. You can also leave a question or comment on our comment line at 314-996-1542. We are the messenger of good news, Worldwide KFUO.